Okay, we have here, this is, like I said on Sunday, we will today look at graphs and we will also look at the calculations of KC. So we will first look a little bit at the theory behind um, KC. We're going to work on the page again. And we say KC gives us an indication of the ratio of the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants at equilibrium. If I now take an equation, sulfur dioxide gas plus oxygen gas, and it's a reversible reaction to give me sulfur trioxide gas, and we just ba balance it quickly. We've dealt with this one before. Then we see that this is the product and those are my reactants. And you'll see on top there I made an arrow. I didn't make an equal sign because it is an indication. When we write it as an equation, we're going to say that Kc is equal to the concentration of sulfur trioxide to the power 2 because the coefficient of sulfur trioxide in my equation is 2. And we're going to divide that by the concentration of sulfur dioxide to the power 2. And once again, the 2 that I have here goes with the 2 that I have in front of sulfur dioxide. And finally, it must be multiplied with a concentration of oxygen. So what we clearly indicate is that in this ratio, we find the concentration of the products, that is what the square bracket indicates, concentration, and it is lifted to the power that is equal to the coefficient. So in this case, oxygen is to the power one, we don't have to put it in, but I'm just indicating because there's only one oxygen molecule used in this reaction when it is balanced. So the first thing that is very important is your equation must be balanced in order to write a correct expression for Kc. What we also know is that Kc has no unit. So we're going to substitute concentration and concentration has a unit of mole per cubic decimeter. But when after we substituted this, we see that Kc has no unit. And what we do in that case is that we simply, so we're going to put an, an example here. You can either say Kc is 2, or you can say Kc is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 3, but don't put any units down. You can, because the mole per cubic decimeter is only applicable to the concentrations of the products and the reactants. Another very important uh, fact for Kc is that solids, the concentration of solids is taken as 1 and therefore it is left out of Kc expressions. So if I quickly give an example, we, before we had the equation calcium carbonates as a solid and calcium carbonate was in equilibrium with calcium oxide which was also a solid and oxygen. So that's a decomposition reaction. And oxygen is in a gas form. And therefore, in this case, what we find is that although calcium oxide is a product, we will not include it in the Kc expression. In fact, for this specific reaction, Kc is equal to the concentration of oxygen alone. And the reason for that is that um, this as a solid is not included and that solid is not included. We also find that um, the concentration of liquids is also left out, pure liquids, of the expression. So what we do put, what we do include will be gases 
and the concentration of aqueous solutions. So whenever you see an L and whenever you see an S behind a chemical substance in an equilibrium equation, you do not include it in your KC expression. But when we see gas and when we see AQ for watery solution or aqueous solution, then we do include it. So we can now go to our question. Okay, I'll read the question quickly. An engineer injects five mole of nitrogen and five mole of hydrogen into an empty five cubic decimeter sealed container. So we've got five moles nitrogen, five mole hydrogen. Now what is very significant is that the volume is equal to five cubic decimeters. And why this is significant is because the concentration, which is what we use in our KC expression, is equal to number of moles over volume. So we cannot put this into our equation because that is a quantity and not any uh, concentration. So we first have to work out, and what we will see then is that the concentration of nitrogen is equal to one mole, let me just write it out, so five divided by five to one mole per cubic decimeter. And the concentration of hydrogen is also one mole per cubic decimeter. It says then that equilibrium is reached at 450 degrees. Upon analysis of the equilibrium, he finds that the mass of ammonia is 20,4 grams. Let me go on. Mass of ammonia equals 20.4 grams. So once again we see that the quantities given were moles and mass. And therefore it's important because we must only put concentration in our KC expression. It is important to first work out how many moles of ammonia we have. So the first thing we need to do is we have to get the molar mass of ammonia. And the reason for that is that the number of moles is equal to the mass, which is given, divided by the molar mass. And I hope by now you know that we have to add the atomic masses of all the atoms that's involved. And therefore, in this case, because nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14 and hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1, but there are three hydrogen atoms. And therefore, we find that um, the molar mass or the molecular mass of ammonia is 17 grams per mole. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor, and that is that you please calculate the number of moles of ammonia for me, and then you must please, uh, I'll give you two or three minutes to calculate that, and then you must just type it in and send it through to me. Okay, well I've see, seen nobody um, sending me the answer. I hope you have your calculators with you. So what we find is that 17 grams divided by 20, uh, 17 grams per mole, I think I might have this the wrong way around. N is equal to mass over molar mass, and therefore it is 20.4 divided by 17. Okay? And that would give us 1,2 um, would be moles. So we find that the number of moles of ammonia in H3 is 1.2 mole. And what we have to work out now is the concentration. We say the concentration of ammonia will be the number of moles divided by the volume, which is 1.2 mole divided by 5 cubic decimeters. And that, is, that will give us 0 0.24 mole of ammonia mole per cubic decimeter. Okay, so now we have the concentration. So what we have to remember is that that initial one mole per cubic decimeter is, uh, is not at the same time as this 0 0.24 mole. So that is where if we draw up a table, we normally say that we look at the 
concentration of nitrogen, concentration of hydrogen, and the concentration of ammonia. And we make our table and we first look at the initial concentrations and then we have one for nitrogen, one for hydrogen, and we have zero for ammonia. We then look at how much reacted or how much was formed. Now obviously, the formed goes for ammonia and the reacted will go for the nitrogen and the hydrogen. And what we then have to find out is what are the concentrations at equilibrium or the number of moles and then we get the concentration. So what we have worked out now is that at equilibrium we have 0 0.24 moles of ammonia. So just make sure that the first values that was given to you goes under initial because that is what the engineer started with and that the 0 0.24 mole per cubic decimeter concentration goes under ammonia because that it, it was found that the mass was 20, 4 grams. So that automatically uh, implies that this number of moles has been formed. And what we now have to work out is uh, what the moles are. If we say that's the concentration, because this is mole per cubic decimeter. And from there, we're going to use the same equation, C equal to N over V. So 0, 0,24 is equal to n over 5 and therefore n is equal to 0 0.24 times 5. Okay, if we could get that answer quickly. Let's just do it quickly. 24 times 5 is 20. So there we've got 1. 1.2 moles of ammonia was formed, uh, is found at equilibrium, and because we started with zero, it means 1.2 moles were formed, and we put a plus in front of it because it is new ammonia that has been formed. And what's very important now is that we, that we look at the ratios in our balanced equation, and we know the balanced equation we have is that. And so what we see is that for every one mole of nitrogen, we form two moles of ammonia. Or the other way around, for every two moles of ammonia formed, we use one mole of nitrogen. In other words, the ratio is two to one if we work from ammonia, and that implies that 0, 0,6 mole of nitrogen has been uh, used or reacted. What we then look at is if we started with 1, so this will be a 5, sorry, and that will be a 5. Remember, these are our moles. So we find that we have 4.4 moles of nitrogen left. Then we again look at our mole ratios, and we see that for every 1 mole of nitrogen, 3 moles of hydrogen will react. And therefore, we take 0, 0,6 times 3, and we get 1,8 moles of hydrogen has been used and that will then tell me that 5 minus 1,8 will give me 3,2. So it's taking a bit long but I'm, I'm just making sure that you understand. Initial, so everything before the C we work in moles and the last line is where we divide it by 5 to get our concentration and therefore to now get the concentration of nitrogen at equilibrium, we have to divide 4.4 by 5, and our answer will be 0, 0,88. And then we divide 5 into 3.2, and our answer will be 0, 0,6, and uh, that will be 4. And these are the values that will now go into our equation to calculate Kc at that specific uh, temperature of 450 degrees Celsius.
So before our time runs out, let's do that. We have nitrogen plus three hydrogen gives us ammonia. And therefore, Kc equals ammonia concentration to the power two divided by nitrogen concentration and hydrogen concentration to the power three. And we do our substitution and we get 0, 0,24 squared divided by 0, 0,88 and that is 0, 0,64 to the power 3. So once again, I want to indicate the 2 comes from ammonia as the exponent and the 3 comes from hydrogen as an exponent. So for the last time, I'm going to ask you guys to work out that answer for me and just send it back to me. I'm giving you about one minute to get your calculators out and work it out for me. Okay, so, so what I have here is my answer of 0, 0,249, and as I indicated, there is no unit for that. So if I just bring my table back, it looks a bit busy, but I, I hope you can see. So if I look at our table, they told us that we started with five moles of nitrogen and five moles of hydrogen. And because ammonia is the product, there's zero moles. And then the next piece of information was that we are left with 20,4 grams of ammonia. So I'll go back there and we see that we had to use the equation N equal to mass over molar mass. So the important thing was to get the molar mass of ammonia and which was 17, the given mass was 20,4, and therefore we said the number of moles of ammonia was 20,4 divided by 17, which was 1.2 moles. But we always work with concentration in that last row, so we said concentration is number of moles over volume, and that gave me 1,2 divided by 5, and the concentration was therefore 0 0,24 mole per cubic decimeter. And that is put in here. And therefore, because all the rows above the concentration must be in moles, and therefore we put in, uh, we multiplied 0, 0,24 by 5, and that indicated that we had 1,2 moles of ammonia, and that is that had to be formed in the reaction, that's why it's plus 1.20. To get to the values for nitrogen and hydrogen, we used our mole ratio, 1 to 3 to 2, and therefore we had to divide by two to get the concentration, the number of moles of nitrogen and multiply that by three to get 1,8. Then we had to uh, subtract five minus 0, 0,6 gave me 4.4, five minus 1,8 gave me 3.2. And once again, because we need concentration here, we had to divide by five. So I'll just put here N over V and we got the concentrations were 0, 0,88 and 0, 0,64 and 0, 0,24. We then went to our KC expression, finding that the product goes on top. We did our substitutions and then we did a calculation further. And this question I think was worth nine marks in total. So you can see how important it is to know which equation to use or which formula to use in which case. And also how important it is to know how to write your KC expression. The reason why all of them featured in this specific expression is because all of them were in the gas phase. I think that is all we'll have time for for today. So I want to thank you for coming today. It has been a wet day, cold day, but I hope that what we've done today on chemical equilibrium, especially the graphs, has been um, of great help to you. And please uh, put those questions through on the website, the Moodle, ask your teachers to assist you with it. And um, the next physical science teacher will then be with you in a few weeks. Thank you and goodbye.